In some youth sports settings, up to 35% of adolescent athletes sustained an overuse injuries in the previous 12 months. And in some sports, that percentage can be much higher. In track and field, for example, up to 68% of adolescent athletes have sustained an overuse injury. And a lot of you are aware of these things. It's why you want to start strength training with your young athlete. A lot of the parents I speak to all say the same thing. They want to implement strength training with their young athlete. They just don't know where to start how much to do of what, and what to implement when to have progression in place. And when I start to have these conversations with the parents that I work with, they start to realize that their child's in a huge amount of sports training without having any targeted athletic development or injury prevention program in place. And it's not because of a lack of motivation to do so, it's because they don't have the confidence and knowledge to have a clear plan in place. So why are overuse injuries so prevalent during the growth spurt? Well, during the growth spurt, adolescent athletes experience a massive increase in the rate of growth in things like the long bones. And the muscles and tendons are essentially trying to play catch up to that. At the same time, they get an increase in things like growth hormone and testosterone, which can significantly increase their ability to produce force. And mix that in with the weight gain they naturally experience during those times with the increase in height and mass, then we've got this perfect storm. This leads to a situation where the heavier body that can produce more force isn't able to tolerate the demands it's placed under, where the muscles and tendons just aren't developed enough to be able to tolerate those forces. And when you start to factor those things in with the repetitive nature of sport, with lots of repetitive high force actions, it leads to tissue overload. Well, surely just playing the sport itself should physically prepare a young athlete for the demands of sport and offset any of those risks of injury. Well, this is where it gets interesting. A longitudinal study in volume players found that quadricep strength developed faster than strength in the patellar tendon and cross-sectional area size. To put it simply, sport can cause mismatches in the development between strength in the muscles and strength in the tendons in adolescent populations. The good news is that same group of researchers provided an insight on a type of muscle contraction or training modality that can be implemented with young athletes to help offset that imbalance that was developing between the muscle and the tendon. And I'm going to explain exactly how you can implement that in a fun and challenging way for your young athlete. Now they're called isometrics, which is essentially a muscle contraction that occurs without much change in the muscle length or changes in joint angles, just like you're seeing here with this wall sit. So what's actually happening when a young athlete holds an isometric exercise? Well, it may potentially increase collagen density and cross-linking, which improves tendon strength and stiffness. So not only are those adaptations that isometric cause great for helping reduce that imbalance between muscle strength and tendon strength that we see often developing in adolescence during sport, but stiffer tendons are so much more efficient at force transfer. Stiffer tendons are better at recoil. So they're much better at helping a young athlete jump further, jump higher. And the reason it's so important to implement things like isometrics is it typically takes longer for tendons to develop. And with stiffer tendons, a young athlete improves their running economy and accumulates less fatigue because their tendons become better at returning energy. And just a quick side note, stiffer tendons doesn't mean stiff and not being able to move. Stiffer tendons refers to their ability to transfer force effectively. Now, one thing I do want to make really, really clear before I show you some practical examples how you can integrate isometrics into your training with challenges and progressions for your young athlete is that isometrics shouldn't replace all other training. They're just a piece of the puzzle that's really, really beneficial for your young athlete. So they should be incorporated into an integrated program that incorporates muscle contractions that have movement as well. We shouldn't just focus on isometrics to make that clear. But isometrics are a small piece in that puzzle that really, really help with tendon development. The three sites that we see lots of overuse injuries occurring are the heel, the knee and the elbow. So the heel, for example, is used in lots of jumping and landing, decelerating and sprinting. It's very common in sports like volleyball, basketball, football, anything that has lots of sprinting and locomotive demands or jumping demands. Then also the knee, very similar. The knee is also one that is involved in lots of jumping, decelerating and sprinting. Lots of sports with high locomotive demands, lots of change of directions and decelerations. And then for the elbow, we see that in sports that use throwing or racket sports. So sports like baseball or tennis or cricket or squash or badminton all have a lot of volume and repetitive actions going through the elbow joint. Here's a few challenges you could use to get your child engaged in the process of strength training that incorporate isometrics that are going to strengthen the lower body and specifically the patella tendon. This one's great for any young athletes that are doing lots of jumping, change of direction, re-acceleration, all those different things. So the challenge here could be while balancing a tennis ball on a block, 
They have to go down into the squat position, hold that squat position, and keep the tennis ball balanced for a certain amount of time. It could be trying to balance the tennis ball for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever it may be. You can choose that dependent on your young athlete's ability. Another squat variation could be holding the bottom of a squat and having to touch one foot and shift over to touch the other one. This one's great because the constraint is they have to stay low in the squat position to be able to touch the opposite foot. If they're not low enough, they're not gonna be in that position to be able to touch the opposite foot. Another great one for building strength. And look for maybe 20, 30 seconds holding that position while they're doing hand touches. It could be shorter, it could be longer based on your young athlete's ability. To add variability or increase intensity in the patella tendon, a heel board can be used. It raises the heels up and puts more load through the patella tendons. So another challenge could be you get a young athlete to balance an item on the head, it can be a cone, going down into the bottom of the squat position, holding it, being active in that position and trying to hold it for a set challenge. It could be 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and just having progression over time. Seeing if they can do that and repeating it three times. Lunge position isometric holds are absolutely amazing for developing strength in the patella tendon. And also a little trick, when we're doing a lunge isometric with a young athlete, if they're displaying good levels of balance and stability, you can also target the Achilles tendon for protecting the ankle joint from overuse injuries in terms of the Achilles in the heel by doing it on a raised platform. So putting the forefoot on the block and going raised, that way we can target the patella tendon and the Achilles tendon at the same time with an isometric. So any of these variations could be done with a block, but if your young athlete has low levels of stability, don't worry about the block, just stick with the lunge isometrics. This first isometric lunge position challenge is gonna allow them to work to their true capacity. So the challenge is put a cone on the floor and you're gonna time your young athlete. What they have to do is put their knee on the floor or the cone without crushing the cone and see how long they can hold this lunge isometric position for. And then they've got to try beat it. And then obviously after they've had some good rest, you can switch sides, hold in that position, hold in the bottom of the lunge position. If they crush the cone, that's when the time stops. Or if they stand up and keep coming up from that position, that's when the time stops. Another lunge isometric challenge could be getting a young athlete to hold the bottom of a lunge position, knee off the ground, and seeing for a certain amount of time, it might be 10, 20, 30 seconds, seeing if they can hold this position and balance a tennis ball on a block or a disc or a slider, whatever it is, for the whole time. And you give them the opportunity to have three goes on each side to see if they can complete the challenge. Then to add difficulty to a lunge hold isometric, you could have an isometric where they've got to see how many times they can do around the world while balancing the tennis ball. So they go into position, how many times they can do it in a certain amount of time, it might be 20 or 30 seconds on each side, go into the bottom of a lunge, knee off the ground, and seeing how many round the worlds they can do in the given time without dropping the tennis ball. And they get three goes on each side to try and get the high score. Some examples of isometrics that target the elbow. These are a bit faster, but crab position isometrics are absolutely amazing. Although the contraction is much faster, we're still getting that contraction and rapid activation in that static position, even if it's for a split second. So switching from one hand to another, holding that isometric for, it's only a very short time but it's still a static contraction. If you want to then actually lengthen out the duration of that, we could go into challenges where we're holding a position of crab and trying to throw how many can a young athlete get holding that position. Now variations in front support positions also target the elbow isometrically. So holding the static position and seeing how many bounce catches they can do in a given time, it could be 10, 20 or 30 seconds, targets the elbow isometrically, switching side, seeing how many they can get in 10, 20 or 30 seconds. And they could do two to three sets on this exercise to have the opportunity to try and get a high score. So they're constantly trying to work to beat their high score, a bit of coordination demand, but also really specifically targeting that physical quality. So isometric training is a simple, safe and scientifically proven way to reduce risk of injury in youth sports. And the positive byproduct is it is really beneficial in improving athletic performance. So if you wanna help your young athletes stay injury free, improve their performance, isometrics are a great, simple way to start.